Hi, I'm Bart Herbison, Executive Director of the Nashville Songwriters Association. And this week, the story behind the song is when you're in love with a beautiful woman, and one of my heroes, Mr. Even Stevens. And we're going to do a couple consecutive weeks with Even. But before we talk about that song, you know something I didn't know about you? What's that? I've known you forever. I didn't know you designed and built Emerald Studios. Well, I did with David Malloy. Right, Dave, yeah. David and I owned that together. Mm -hmm. I knew you owned it, but I didn't know you were the architect. That's so oh, yeah. cool. We designed it, tried to, you know, we didn't have a good place to work at that time in Nashville. There, the studios weren't great at that time, so we decided we were always going to Muscle Shoals or Los right. Angeles to record just for the studios. So we decided to build one that we thought was state of the art. Well, Nashville owes you, I mean, the history of that place, man. Oh, thank you. It's... Yeah, we're really proud of that. It took a long time to get it together, but it and, turned out good. And I could take weeks on who you are. Every, all the country stuff, Joe Cocker, Julio, the London Symphony. But you know the question I get asked most about you, and I got asked in the lobby by some of the NSI What's that? employees. What's that? Is his name really even? Well, Stevens? of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> but don't you think that's kind of like a, don't you think that's a song? You were destined for this. Well, yeah. You know, my name really isn't even Stevens. but My last name is Stevens, but I was in the Coast Guard before I got into music. I was a Morse code operator. And uh, online, and when you send a Morse code, you have a handle, and it's usually your initials. But since my last name was Stevens, they called me Even <laughs> online. So when I got into music, I thought that was a good handle still. Oh, you know, too, my yeah. friend. Yeah. So when you're in love with the beautiful woman, I think it was a really important song. We'll talk about how the song came about in a minute. But Dr. Hook, they're big. Disco kind of is hitting at this time or at its peak. Mm -hmm. That wasn't what I think they set out to do, but no. it became a hit in that genre. And something else, it was usually Ray Sawyer. But if I remember correctly, when they were working up the parts, Ray acknowledged, he goes, Dennis sings this better than I do. And Dennis LaCourie ended up doing the lead. Yeah, I, I don't remember it actually happening that they made that decision. Uh, Dennis just had that great balladeer right, voice, right. you know. And uh, I think it's, it just fit him best because of that but uh i was really glad when they did it, I, it you know, you talk about the disco thing it had a straight four feel right, right. which i didn't really write it that way i wrote, wrote it, it more was almost like, a line dance disco thing everybody was doing yeah kind of a, yeah it it was on it was in all the pop on all the pop stations not just disco but it was right at the end of that thing you right. know and uh, i i really wrote it more like a Smokey robinson feel right. you know like a push feel like boom boom you know mm -hmm. kind of a heartbeat kind of thing but uh, actually, when they were recording it, <laughs> they did the first take down at Jackson uh, Jackson Road or Jackson Highway Studios in Muscle Shoals with the Muscle Shoals guys, and I was there. And uh, they did a cut of it and came in to listen, and their producer, Ron Hafkin, says, what do you think? And I went, it's getting there. <laughs> and he goes, no, that's it. And I went, ah, you know, it don't sound right to me. It don't feel right to me. And then, But as it went up the charts, yeah. I was going, man, this guy's a genius. <laughs> and <laughs> and not it, only that, even it charted in so many countries, and, and it had a, such a long run because it caught on here, and then it yeah. was Belgium, Australia, Austria. It was everywhere. Well, it's still the song that never dies, which I'm very fortunate for yeah. that. And uh, it was, I think it was platinum or gold in 13 countries. Wow. Well, but, what? Uh, tell me about the day you wrote it. What's the story behind that song? Well, I was, I was uh, kind of on the street during that time. I'd had some a couple hits with Eddie at that point, but uh, I was I met this new girl and I was dating her for a few months, and she was a singer in a group. And she was playing at the Vanderbilt Holiday Inn in a band. And uh, that night I went down to see her and waiting for her to get her break so I could talk with her. And I never got to talk with her because all the guys were hitting on her because right. she was really pretty. And uh, so I kind of got pissed about that. <laughs> <laughs> and I got in my car and I wrote that song in about five minutes, heading home, heading to my apartment. And just wrote the song, and when I picked up the guitar, when I got, I knew the chords and everything. It was all in my head, the melody and everything. And I just wrote it really quick like that, because it was a real deal, you know. It's it's about jealousy and paranoia and that kind of stuff. And yeah, here's the line, you know, yeah. that I think describes the whole song, and and really profound to me. You watch your friends. <laughs> uh, yeah, that 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 verse is my favorite verse yeah. about the telephone and all that, but. Uh, 
you know, I not long after that, I with Eddie and David, I wrote uh, and Randy McCormick, I wrote "Suspicions," right. which is kind of the a jealousy song, as a way in a way too, a, a, an uneasiness about you know someone. So did I always and, ask this when uh, they're inspired by a girl? Did she know it was about her? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, was that good? Or I bad? call those years my paranoid <laughs> years. <laughs> it was good. In fact, on the demo that I did, uh, she's singing background on it. Yes. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Now, it's been <laughs> recut. I'm mm -hmm. not sure by huge pop arts, but it, I, I've just seen so many versions by indie bands. It gets covered all the time. It does. My favorite one is Steel Pulse, a Rasta, Rasta man group from England, which is a, a big uh, Rasta group. And I really like their cut of it. They they go off on it and do strange things in it, and, mm -hmm. and it feels so good, their cut. But I, the strangest cut I had was by a woman in Germany. And so, think I, really? I think she had, it was of the alternate lifestyle, you know. But uh, her singing "When You're in Love with a Beautiful Woman" was kind of strange. But cool. But, I, I really yeah. think about it. I haven't heard that. I'm going to check it out. Uh, Doctor Hook's producer said, "If you can do this with a beer in Germany, you have a hit." <laughs> when you're in love with a beautiful. <laughs> so, uh, you know, what? Um, and Doctor Hook still does it. Yeah. Well, I was really lucky to get that cut because. I actually, um, right after I wrote that song, I went in and recorded it at uh, uh, Steve Singleton's demo studio, and I used Jimmy Capps, was playing acoustic guitar, and Billy Lineman on upright bass, and that's all it was. And I, I was recording that, and the next day, my Uncle Jack, who was my favorite uncle out in Utah, called me, and he was, happened to be uh, Engelbert Humperdinck's best friend. And since Engelbert got to the United States, they were golfing buddies and everything, and he'd always call me and say, uh, you got any songs I can play for Engelbert? And I'd never do it because I thought it was kind of cheesy pitching songs to Engelbert through my uncle, you right. know? And for years, I never did it. And when I wrote that song, I thought, man, this would be a good song for Engelbert. He'd head after the loving, you know? Right. And so I called up... that was a different feel the way you did yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. a different arrangement. Mm -hmm. And so, so I called him up. I said, I think I got a song Engelbert would be really great on. And he says, well, come out. So I flew out there. And Engelbert and my uncle met me, and we went to the Beverly Hills Hotel and had some drinks, and then went to Engelbert's house. And Engelbert's house was on Sunset Strip, and it was Jane Mansfield's mansion, right. old mansion. It had a heart-shaped swimming pool, 13 bathrooms. I lived in a single-wide <laughs> uh, single trailer in Mount Juliet at the time, so it was a little strange for me. And uh, so after we'd hung out and played darts and drank and stuff uh, and he said well i hear you got a song and i had a tape of it and i said yeah i do and he says well come down to my rec room i just had a thirty thousand dollar sound system put in it should sound in incredible so we go down there and it's awesome and I, he puts my tape in there and he starts it and it goes doom 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 and he ate my tape oh. <laughs> i went you ruined my tape he goes your tape ruined my machine <laughs> so that was the end of it i hadn't taken a guitar with me he didn't have any guitars so i couldn't play him the song so uh i said he said well send me a copy of it so i hung out with him a little bit and the next day i flew back to nashville all depressed because i really thought that was the one and when i got back to town i decided to put uh, Sherry, who was the girl that was, the song was written about, and myself on some backgrounds on it, went back in the studio, and right before I went in, I ran into my buddy Shel Silverstein, right. and he'd been writing all of Dr. Hook's hits, almost everything they ever did, uh, Sylvia's Mother, Cover of Rolling Stone, Got Stoned and I Missed right. It, all those songs. And he said, hey, Eve, and he's the only guy I let <laughs> call me Eve. <laughs> He said, Eve, I, I've been uh, writing a lot of songs, and Dr. Hook's doing a new album, and they asked me uh, for songs, and I played them a bunch, and they don't seem to want this bunch. He says, but I think you've got the songs they, they could do, do now. And do you mind if I bring the producer over to the studio when you're recording? I went, yeah, that'd be great. So he came over that night and heard I was working on Beautiful Woman, putting the backgrounds on it, and he said, let's cut that. And two days later, we were down in Muscle Shoals recording uh -huh. the record. But... I, uh, I owe Shel Silverstein a, a great uh, debt of gratitude because, I mean, it was so big of him to pass that baton on to me, you know, and as a, as a songwriter. Was, he sure Shell, was. But, um, he sure was. And it opened an important door because you and Engelbert have had a long, multi-year relationship. He produced his records many yes. cuts. But yes. uh, fabulous story behind the song this week. We're going to hear a little bit of it. It's Even Stevens.
and when you're in love with a beautiful woman. Well, let's see here. When you're in love with a beautiful woman, it's hard. When you're in love with a beautiful woman, you know it's hard. Cause everybody wants her, everybody loves her, everybody wants to take your baby home. When you're in love with a beautiful woman, you watch your friends.